So, hi everybody, welcome to the Action Code community. And today's business spotlight with Mr. Paul Cosgrove of makeitso.ie. Paul, you're very welcome. Great to see you today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Fantastic. So, tell the audience here, what in God's name do you do? And how long have you been doing it? Um, it's nearly the six year anniversary actually since I established the company. And we're all about productivity. about, And we really just work with small to mediums and looking at increasing their productivity, particularly their knowledge workers. So productivity is such a, it's a buzzword and it's a big word. But we look at improving the processes and the technology of small to mediums, you know, to reduce cost and, and bring up their, their, their value. So that's fundamentally what we do. So it's a it's an online platform, is that what, what no, it is? No, no, no. We, we do a lot of consultation and, and then okay. a lot of implementation. So I, I've used the line that we're practitioners, not professors before. So often when we go to a small business, um, I pepper them with about a thousand questions because I need to understand what they sounds do. like. It sounds like a good coaching, yeah. <laughs> and from that, like when you have enough experience with the, the, the back end and the operational side of people's businesses, you know, you see the patterns. And, and I've said this before, you know, no business is that different, you know. So, you know, a butcher, a baker, for, for give the analogies, they're, they're different businesses in the front end of what they do, but at the back end, where the operations lie, where the ordering, the invoicing, the payroll, scheduling, all of that is the same. And so what we've looked at is saying, right, well, if all these businesses are the same in the back end, you know, and we've got all this experience about how to do it really, really cool and fast and, and, and automated with cheap technology, then we just roll that out for each client that we come across. Okay, so you can tailor make it for what their requirements are. Absolutely, but you know, the, the beauty of it is, is that, you know, it, it, it's everyone thinks that their business is slightly different and the front end is that their personalities are and how they run their business and how they, they brand it is different, but the back end of it is not. So that's where we use our skills to, to improve the processes and, and really then using cheap and intuitive technology just to, to drive down costs and give them back time. So we're both saying the same thing, saving them time and money, which is fantastic. Yeah. Excellent, Paul. So tell me, can you give us an idea of what, your, uh, what a best customer, what a good customer would be for you? Oh, okay. Name, but just give us an idea of a good customer. Yeah. Well, I suppose I'll, I'll tell you why I've come to this, my, my, my favorite type of customer. This is a personal thing, but my background was, was corporate. It was global multinationals. The last company that I worked for had 45,000 people in it. So um, I'm very versed in, in, in big global corporate companies and I know they work. But I took that skill set to work with um, more small to mediums because it's a lot quicker to get changes implemented. And it's a lot, I enjoy working with the small business owners because those stories are fascinating about how they set up their business and where it came from, what their passion is and why they do it. And then, you know, try to help them solve their, their problems because, you know, your passion might be, you know, you run a bicycle shop, you might run a safety course, you know, you might make... Uh, furniture, whatever the, the passion is, what, what breaks your heart is the, the, you know, where's that order? Or did we email this person and all, all that stuff that, that falls over? So, so the ideal client is always, you know, small to medium business, even micros, small to mediums, and um, someone that that's that's grown their business that loves it, but you know, they just hit that pinch point where they've they they cannot scale without doing something a little bit smarter. Mm. And you've got two options. You either hire more people, which is just more cost, or you look to say, well, has somebody else done a little bit better than us before? Um, is there a better way? And, and who's that guy? That's it. <laughs> so you're, you're, an invet, you're an investment, not a cost. Fantastic. Yeah. So tell me, COVID came along and affected everybody. What changes were you forced to make during that period? Um, well, obviously, I would have done some work online before COVID anyways, um, and then done site visits. So for me, it, it stopped the site visits, um, which which are a bit tough because, you know, again, like to my earlier point about understanding someone's business, mm. I, I don't go in and, and sell a solution because that personally drives me crazy. <laughs> you know, what you really have to do is understand the person, understand the business, and then, you know, give them a solution that will move them forward, not just sell them you know, you, you know, sell them something generic, right? Um, so, so that was a little bit difficult to try to do all that over Zoom. But, but you just 
where we find a way. Uh, and, and that was it. So we did find a way to <coughs> up our, our process, which is unique, which is, you know, understanding the skill set of the, the people within the company. So the site visit was brilliant for that because there's no point to me saying, look, this is a solution that will help your business, right? Anybody can do that. You can do that by just Googling a piece of software. But is it the right solution for that business at the right time? Does it match your skill set? Does it match your capacity for implementation? And, and so that bit was a little bit difficult, but we, we, we just got through it. We still found our way to deliver our, our way of delivering, you know, um, what was his so during, so during that period, then you probably had to do a bit more of the online stuff, the Zoom calls and everything else, because we none of us could meet each other. So how did that work out for you? Good. Like yeah. we were like everybody, like we got super busy during during COVID, especially at the start, because like there's so many people that have so many ideas of how to improve their business. But you know yourself, Tom, it's it's time. And at the start of COVID, when everything kind of shut down. Like there was a lot of time on people's hands. So I got a lot of calls then saying, well, I've wanted to do this for ages, um, but now we have time. Um, and, and that was it. So it was just, it was just like, you know, using Zoom and using that online technology better. Um, and, and look, it was a little bit trickier um, to get to know people, obviously, but you have to find a way and that's it. Yeah. We got to adapt, we got to change. So tell me, Paul, what is, you started this company, I believe, in 2016, is that correct? That's right, Jeff. Yeah. So as a business owner, which you became, because you came from a large corporate, what's the biggest learning you've got since you became a business owner? That's a good question. Uh, I wish you'd prep me in advance. Um, <laughs> I think this is, a, it's a small one, but it's a, it's a big one, if, if that makes sense. So when I left corporate world, I, I, I did a lot of work, you know, it was a big move for me, obviously, like, you know, the salary and benefits and, and, and that. So I did a lot of work on what I'd be leaving behind and what I'd be gaining. And I know I wasn't a, a quick decision. I did a lot of diligence on it. But one thing I think that I missed most and I didn't think I would and how important it was, was the soundboard and the discussions with people in the office. So when you're at home and you have an idea, every idea is a good idea. You know, but it's not, <laughs> you know, when you're in an office or if you've got somebody there to, to bounce stuff off within two seconds, you go, no, that's not the right way. Mm. Or you might hear something and then going to go, oh, I could lever that and go forward. And a lot of our clients love us for that as well, because we are that to them. But I think for myself, um, going from, you know, having nothing but people around uh, to bounce ideas off to, to maybe not was was a little bit tricky at the start and, and it took again you have to find a way and we we found a way it can be a dark and lonely place they say but it's so a like entrepreneurial loneliness someone called it to me once and i thought yeah. that's that's not a thing <laughs> it is exactly so tell me who, what are the biggest learnings you've got out of business and out of life so far oh god that's big um learnings out of business um be authentic um like that's why i think i probably moved I, like, I love the corporate world don't get me wrong i learned so much i mean like I, I got to travel the world so so in my game like i get to, to watch people in my old world i got to see people work in japan in america in india oh, wow. you, you, so you get to see how people do things and, and it was fascinating um and in, in my new world, say the, the small to mediums, um, you, you really get to see people as well at different levels implement stuff. But I think the authenticity of the small to mediums, you know, that some of the, that they've always wanted to open up their own business. They've put their heart and soul into it and they really know it. And, and, and for me as a, like a consultant or an implementator or a problem solver, like I have to match that. So, you know, when I find out about somebody's business, I'm genuinely excited to, to know about what they do and how they do it. And, you know, that passion is contagious. That energy is, is infectious. And, and, and so that's, that's, that's probably one of the biggest things is to, you know, be authentic because you can lose yourself trying to fill a role sometimes. And 
I don't think that'll ever work. So passion and authenticity are the fantastic two great words, which cover a multitude, but I think that's so much, because to me, passion is all, what it's all about. No passion about it, yeah. We just keep on turning up every day and there's no, we're not moving forward. Yeah, uh, do you love it? That's the job. Not good enough. Yeah. Move on. So passion, fantastic. So tell me, what does the future look like for make it so die And what do you think are the main challenges you may face? The future is bright because um, the, the before before COVID hit, um, the Irish government commissioned the OECD to write a report about productivity around around SMEs. And you know, I read that fifty page report, and, and there was gate massive massive uh, holes in it around Ireland's SMEs, but globally about their productivity levels and how they can do things better and how digital is the way forward. It's not just about using tools, it's about using them correctly. Mm -hmm. So all the market research that I could have ever done for a business plan for myself was done for me. Now, unfortunately, that, that was published, I think, in November 19. And then three months later, <laughs> you know, it's, it's lost focus. But the, the issues are still there. And now the local enterprise offices are supporting it and they've got, you know, lean vouchers, digital start vouchers, Enterprise Ireland are behind it. Um, and it's growing, you know, and, and we're definitely, like you can talk to a lot of our clients, we're, we're definitely at that forefront of, you know, really giving solutions that are tangible to our clients, you know, that, that they, they walk away and go, oh, it's better now. They don't just walk away with an idea. Um, and, and that's our kind of ethos. It's our motto. It's, it's not to just tell, it's to do, you know. Yeah. Um, and and so making those changes is 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 is, is the key, and it's it's our, it's our ethos. But that's where the future is bright, because unfortunately there is such um, a gap. That the OECD report highlighted that, and a lot of providers and solutions they don't want to deal with the micros. They don't want to deal with the smalls. You know, they're looking. If you have a software, you're not looking to put it into someone that might have five employees. You're looking to get yes. five hundred. Yeah. So. A lot, a lot of people are missing this, this, this space. This, yes. you know, how many people are in micro organizations? How many people are in smalls? How many people are in mediums? Most of the workforce of the country are there, yet they're kind of sometimes ignored. Um, so there's a gap in the market for you there to bring that, bring, bring that knowledge and that technology to these people. There you go. Fantastic, fantastic. So, a couple of last questions here. If you started your business again, what would you do differently? Oh, um, you might have to edit this because I'm going to be thinking for a second. Um, <laughs> what I do differently? I, 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 I don't know because I think before I started, um, I, so my background was supply chain um, and manufacturing uh, in pharmaceuticals. So I did, that was it. So when I left, the initial thought was to do a supply chain consultancy company. But I also did a lot of work on productivity um, databases, systems, implementations. So I was always very good at that as well. So it was very much the easier one or probably the, the you know, would have been supply chain consultancy, but it didn't really, the passion wasn't there to, to set up a business. So, um, you know, that's why I say, like I, I really went after what I liked doing, saw the gap in the market and went after it. Um, look, lots of mistakes, lots of things that could have been done differently or better. Um, but they're, they're learnings along the way, I think. No, I'm pretty happy with the way it's gone. I've been very, very lucky with certain clients that have been very, you know, they've seen what I can do and, you know, they, they, they just latched onto it. So I, I, I couldn't tell you a, a one thing that I would have done differently. Um, but, but definitely- But lots of change and lots also learning, lots of failures, yeah. lots of learning. But if you're not failing, you're not trying. I love that saying. Yeah. <laughs> so listen, last one thing there, are there any offers you'd like to include to, you know, to make to the, the audience in the Action Coach community? If they were to contact you and have a chat about what your offerings are, or anything that you'd like to offer to them? Well, well, the, 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 the best thing I would say is to, you know, just go onto our website, fill in the contact form, we can have a quick call. You know, within 20 minutes, I'll be able to tell you very, very quickly whether I can do something for you and, and what that can be. Um, again, like I've done so much of this that like I, I love it, but you, you know straight away where the problem was lie. Yeah. That's free. Okay. So, you know, use that resource because even if you don't take, take us on board, 
like you know look i'm an open faucet here so i'll, I'll tell you exactly what i think so in that 20 minutes half an hour you can get a lot of information that you might want to go and implement yourself um, and as well, the local enterprise offices, enterprise are, are really starting to support this now. Yeah. <laughs> so these are my my offerings, but certainly if I feel that your your business is 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 going down that route where one of your local enterprise offices can support you, you know, I can definitely point you in that direction and show you how to fill in those those forms to, to make sure you get get approved. Fantastic. So for an investment of twenty minutes, and by contacting makeitso.ie guys, okay. And contact Paul Cosby. Fill in the contact form, and you can learn a lot more about it. it. Sounds like a good plan to invest twenty minutes to find out, and it's free. Not a bad offer. Paul, thank you so much indeed for your time today. Great to learn a bit more about you and your business. And thanks for taking part in today's uh, business spotlight. Yeah, thanks for having me.